Jules Standen is a producer, engineer, and founder of the audio website Gearsluts.com. Beginning in 2002 as a forum for engineers, it has grown into a mecca for all things audio. Jules began his career in music in the early 80s at Matrix Studios in London, working with the likes of The Smiths and Susie and the Banshees. He went on to a successful freelance career as a producer and engineer before devoting his full attention to the website. So can we start like pre-Gear Sluts? Oh, pre-Gear Sluts. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So like the Matrix, right? Oh, yeah. How old were you when you started the Matrix? At Matrix, I was 22. Gotcha. So I was quite elderly for a British intern. <laughs> you know? Right. But that meant that I wasn't um, a dickhead, you know, and, uh, you know, I, 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 get, I, I wanted this job, yeah. you know. Yeah. The first day on the job, the owner of the studio had a custom racing Porsche outside, and he said, get a bucket of soapy water and a sponge and come back here to reception. I said, right. And uh, he said, I said, okay, I've got it. He said, go wash my car. And I had the, the crossroads in my life. Right. Throw the bucket of water over him. Right. And tell him to fuck off. Yeah. Or wash his car. Let me guess what you did. I saw I washed the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so good. So I did that. Yeah. And then uh, what I didn't know was that he'd been away on holiday. And while he was on holiday in Africa or something, he found a, a sort of a family friend. In, and he imported this guy to be the assistant for the studio. So there was two of us, because I was hired by the studio manager. And this other kid came with the owner. So it was kind of like, well, there's two of you. We only need one, you know. So at this point, there's only one room? or I, I uh, No, there's th it's a three-room three. complex, right, right? Right. So they had a Trident A-Range, mm -hmm. a custom desk. Yeah, a Trident TSM. TSM. Those are great mm. consoles. Yeah. yeah. Do you like so those at all? With the little, like little Monopoly yeah. houses for yeah. Yeah. EQ. Yeah. 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 And so we had them. So basically, being older than the kid, he would lean up against a wall and watch me clean door frames and things you know because i was uh, i had nothing to do so i thought i'd clean this up yeah. make it look yeah. nice you know yeah. and he just leaned there talking to me and yeah. uh that didn't get him fired from right. the boss because right. he was the boss's the guy guy yeah but when it came around to sessions i was in demand and he wasn't so much in demand right. you know right so it worked out like that yeah it's interesting because you know we did i did the record plant when i was a kid mm -hmm. And it was literally the latter, Steve Mark Antonio. He trained me as an assistant. Yeah. And he trained himself. He got trained as an engineer. But literally, people, you just keep going up the ladder. Some people would just fall off and get fired because they weren't really good at it. Yeah. But you just waited. You know, you knew eventually if you worked hard and you had the right attitude, like you're saying. Yeah. Did you know that eventually it would happen? For me, no. Yeah. I, I was, I, you know, always on the. I was always like nervous about shit, trying to work hard, but you never really know. Mm -hmm. But you just work really hard, and you, you know, we, uh, I had a thing. You had the car. I had Jimmy Iovine sending me out for, you know, I don't know, champagne at like nine o'clock every night. You yeah, know? and I'd stay late to just be like help out. Yeah, and he'd be like, "Meatloaf needs champagne," or whatever the fuck they, you know, <laughs> and I, that would be the thing. Yeah. Champagne needs some meat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, yeah. so. So then, so you're assisting, but I looked at your thing. I mean, you, you were working with some awesome, you worked on some awesome records. Yeah, so early on, um, I was working there one day and this band came in and they all looked like they were sort of, um, they look a bit tough, like they worked on a construction site, the young kids, you know, short haircuts, not sort of rock haircuts or anything mm -hmm. like that, short haircuts. And a singer that was sort of very private wouldn't talk to anyone. And it was Morrissey. Mm -hmm. So that was the first session. They'd already tried recording the album in Manchester, and we were the A team now, and this was the, the stuff right. that came out. Right. And so we're recording their first records. I was, um, you know, the assistant. There wasn't a remote for the tape machine. You had to sit by mm -hmm. the tape machine, you know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did that and go up to the pub to get beer. They borrowed some of my guitars on the album. And uh, kind of like nobody's to the next time they came in the studio, the single had been out, and I was literally having to throw people out the control room saying i'm from the times of london right i right. want to speak to morrissey yeah yeah you know and i'd have to throw them out and who's producing those records that was john porter oh great and great. he was a, a bassist for roxy music yeah. and the band like that so we got to record through all these tweed amps and mm. we double tracked everything and we used a boss chorus pedal that was mm, that was the sure. secret ingredient oh yeah that big that green yeah right boss chorus pedal yeah. everything went through that and me and johnny became uh Buddies during that. You so know. you said you had guitars. Did you start as a player? 
Yes, I was going to be a rock star. Did you want to be a rock star? Sure. Exactly. No, I don't want to be a rock star. You didn't want to be a rock star? No, I just want to work in something that I didn't hate. Okay. <laughs> so, well, uh, I wanted to be a rock star. But when I got up on stage, I got the feeling that everyone in the, in the room was looking at me in my direction. And I didn't like that. Right. So that's not a good qualification yeah. for, right. <laughs> for being on stage. Right. So I, the backroom thing really suited me. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. going to tell you the other thing that got me into stuff is I'm a big Stones fan and Exile of Main Street in particular. Mm. You could bury me with that album. Yeah. So I had a family friend's dad work for Acoustic Research, the, the hi-fi company, AR. Right. And uh, we got all these prototype amps for cheap because we didn't have much money as a family and he sort of felt sorry for us and gave us, gave us these right. prototypes, you know, for amps. And one of them had a null button on it. Uh, you'd have to look it up, null. So yeah. null is anything that's not specifically left, right, or, or cent- right. it's center. It's, it's the other stuff. Either way, whatever null is, that's weird. I'd switch it on and I'd just hear the reverb plate and a shaker part. So it was like phasing or something? It was all the out of phase info. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And so I'd be sitting listening to, you know, Sweet Black Angel or something, you know, and uh, on Exile Main Street, and, and I'd just be hearing Shaker and Mick Jagger in a plate. That's fantastic. You know, so th- maybe I got my how records were yeah. put together thing from. By that. That's great. From Amazing. Excited by that. I would love to have one of those. Yeah. No button? Why I'd not? like to have a no button for you. Yeah. <laughs> We can get Anthony to design that. Even exactly. Though he can that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, that's cool. And then, but also Marianne Faithful, I think I saw you had worked with. Mm. And The Matrix was that one of the top or top two or top three studios in London at that point? Uh, it was kind of, um, it was a bit funky. So, yeah, it had a lot of things in it. A lot of punk records were done there and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't in the top it wasn't in the super top. But, see, but the clientele list was pretty well, good. But they were young bands. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So Marion Faithful did her first album there, which I didn't work on, but um, I did some, I met her on some uh, some other sessions doing demos for like maybe her third album or something. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, interesting. She came in one day and she wanted to, uh, she said in her kind of posh voice, you know, can anybody lend me 30 pounds? <laughs> and uh, I thought about it and I thought, well, I'd just gotten paid, which was probably 30 right. pounds, right? That's all I got. I was reaching my pocket and I think, well, you know, she's a nice lady. Yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe I can. The entire session was behind her, waving at me. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. no, don't give yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And I did, I did lend her 30 pounds yeah. and she did pay me back. So. Okay, good, good, good. good. <laughs> Sweet. That's cool. I got a specific question yeah. to ask you about producing and engineering. Mm-hmm. I heard a story, and I think it was you, and you tell me if it's true or not, mm-hmm. but there was a band I worked with that maybe had done their previous record with you, mm-hmm. and they said that during the tracking, you didn't want them to use a click track, mm-hmm. so you played tambourine. Correct. And you sped up the choruses and you're playing and stuff like that to get them to play the right feel. Yeah, so uh, that's what I do. Did that with the Lemonheads. Was that the band? I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. What, so, do you ever work with a band called the Chainsaw Kittens? No. Okay. But but that's the trick I do, or Cowbell. So if I wanted a real feel to it, or a real feel stroke slash uh, drummer can't play with the click. Right. So right. it depends. It's a bit of both. And so I play a cowbell, and if I couldn't keep going for the cowbell with the something drifted off, right. I didn't have. Do you remember that box called the Russian Dragon? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Sure. Yeah, sure. So I bought one of them. I didn't use it much, but yeah. my like my relative, if a singer's singing out, I'm not the sort of genius that would know that it was flat or sharp or right. was, instantly. Some right. people would know. I mean, I, I have a good idea, but not perfect idea. But with tempo and stuff against a click, I'd be thinking, oh God, you know, which is faster, which is slower, you know. Right. So I just preferred to do the, I knew in my sort of musical spirit that mm-hmm. if, if I can't hit this cowbell in time, because I'm good at that, and the band get out of time, then you have to stop and take it again, you know. Right. right. Or it would be tambourine as well. Right. And that allowed, like with the- Some movement and tempo. Exactly. Yeah, it's genius. When I heard that, I was like, motherfucker, that's crazy. What made you, I mean, did you just sit there with a, click track one day and say i'm sick of this like what, what do i do and you did it in the control room right that's right in the control with a little sm57 tape to the desk 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. And uh, the Lemonheads, they that's my radio it's one of my radio hits. I got I got a couple, but but Was the, it what's the shame the, about Ray or Mrs. Robinson? Oh that, great. That, that, that's, that's a great version of that single. Song. Yeah, it's on the radio still, you know, every day. Yeah. Not every day, but often. And uh the drummer came in straight away and said, I, I'm looking worried and said, I'm not good enough to play to a click. Mm -hmm. And I said, no problem, because, uh, and that track really speeds up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it was all right, it was yeah, acceptable, great. you know? But it's sort of the vintage way of making a tempo map. Mm -hmm. Right, You know, the, the right. thing about clicks that is not good is that it's not like coming from within the people playing. Right. It's, but that is a way but, to- But like you said, it's the vintage way of doing a tempo map, except, he's got to do it and that's phenomenal that he can do it you know because right. he's doing it right. it's not like something else is doing yeah, it so right. he really right. has to be able to play yeah and and do it and have right. have the band feel good so that's what struck me was like it's a what kind of crazy mind would think of that <laughs> <laughs> and b genius to actually do it successfully yeah it has a nice real feel yeah. to it and, and we're talking about tempo maps who wants to who wants to scratch their chin and think, oh, well, the kick drum's always going to be a bit early on the chorus, yeah. so we have yeah. to, let's move the, the chorus in a bit quicker and stuff. I found all, I'm, I'm a midi uh, midi yeah. idiot, mm -hmm. so I didn't like midi when that yeah, sort of either. came in much at all. So, so I just did sort of straight ahead rock, and yeah. this real click was great. suited me, you know. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I just love the whole kind. Obviously, I've been meaning to ask you that since I knew you were going to be on here. Mm. I did work with the Lemonheads, but only on one song. I think it was Big Gay Heart. And oh, that's a good song. Did you work on that? I uh, mixed it from live sometimes. Yeah, I think I just did a vocal with him because he needed it done and I was around. Yeah. And then I just did the vocal one day and then he left and that was it. But uh, I'll remember some at one point okay. because I remember the guys, some people in the control room told me. Uh. So um, so who else were you producing at that point? And were you doing still at The Matrix? or did Yeah, you... so, so early on I decided that I didn't want to be the dude sat in the corner being an assistant for years and years and sitting in the corner on a Phil Collins session, sitting in the corner on a David Bowie session. I didn't want to get to that stage. I wanted to be straight out there in charge of the production right. really early. And so because it was really early, I had to work with early bands. So I would go to gigs, find bands that I liked the sound of, and see if they were going to be doing some recording. And pretty much all the bands were, you know, as part of the deal. You know, they, they'd want to record to get a demo to right. try and get a record deal. So I would suggest that me liking their music would be better than them going to a local studio where the guy's looking at his watch and saying, right. six o'clock, you know, we have to finish now. And and if you ask about a vocal take, what do you think? He doesn't care. He's yeah, just like, yeah. you know. Uh, so I'd do that and I'd sort of con them into letting me, you know, do it and for a few, for, for some money, a little bit of money. And that worked quite well. And then I got into a stage where I became as like a demon demo maker. They probably have them in this town, you know, where a manager would call me up and say, I've shopped the band's demos. The The label says that the band's great live, but their recordings are terrible. Two A&R guys recommended you. And my lawyer says we should record right, with that's you. That's great. Right? right. So then I get the band in a room and the manager would give me some kudos like this isn't just a regular guy at the studio this guy's you know we've been told is going to help you right, right. and so i'd say let me go through all the songs and they go well why do you want to hear the old songs everybody knows them and everybody was their mother their sister <laughs> and the the 40 people that came to their yeah, gigs the gig. right and some a and our guys who didn't like it right. that's not everybody right, right right so i said no no let me hear it all yeah. and i'd pick this song this song and this song i pick three songs to do and they, they'd all moan and groan and say, oh, why did you pick that song? We've done that three times. It was because it's your best song. Yeah. We're just on shit versions yeah, of it. Yeah, you just haven't done it right. Yeah. Right. And we want to do these new ones. Well, they're not as good as these three. And because I had this seniority from the management, like, yeah. guys, we better do you this. Have a little clout. Yeah. Yeah. So I could do that. And I'd refer to them as, um, these two are probably going to be, as you know, these are your single. Right. And they'd laugh and say, single, Jules, you're just doing a demo, you know. If you want to call it single, you can, you know. And it's sort of laughing at me in a way. So I'd go ahead and I'd proceed as if I was making a track to come blasting out of a radio. Right. But actually, more than that, I had this gift of making a track that the junior A&R kid could take to an A&R meeting and the A&R managing director would go, what the fuck is that? 
you know. Right. So that was my skill. Right. For, for the A and R boardroom. Right. Yeah. It's Just great. that developing that, a that's band. Pr- that's pretty important, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's kind and, of crucial. <laughs> and so what would happen is that um, they would get deals, or the band would call me and say, "Oh, this cool." The band that was laughing at me calling a single, they'd call me up and say, oh, this cool indie label wants to put that out as a single. And I'm like, yeah, duh. Duh, hello. <laughs> and then it would come out on local radio stations. Mm-hmm. And it, was, it, it, would, it came to a point when a uh, little London radio station, XFM, indie rock radio station, it was like my jukebox. Mm-hmm. It was all the stuff I'd produced yeah. would go straight there. It's amazing. And get power play. So th- I, I settled into this niche of these uh, demon demos. We're talking about what year now? This would have been, well, in the 80s, 80s, 90s, and onwards, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, but it started in the 80s. Yeah. And then I had another trick, which was called, I call it cobweb studio trick. So what you do as a freelancer is you find a studio that is pretty quiet, right? And you say to them, I can, and I recommend this to freelance engineers, I, I, I can, and producers, I can, I can book this place out, but the, the fee has to include me, right? right. So say it was um, 400 bucks. I'd say, I'm gonna need 200, and the studio's gonna be 200. And the studio, right. the studio manager will go, we can't have it known that we're going out for 200 bucks. Right, right. They'd freak out. I say, that you, no, no one will no. know. Yeah, you just pay me. I, I, I get the money from you. And uh, so I did that with three different studios over about five years. And just kept them super busy. Yeah, and they loved yeah, it. They love it, yeah, you yeah. know. But they never had the shame of... Right. The lower rate. Of knowing the, the, the lower yeah. rate. So and, when someone else came in, they could charge the, the, the book rate. Yeah. yeah, and then I could they could play the bad guy too, because then when it came to the end of the session, I'd say, oh, the guy in the office needs to see you, you know, he, the studio needs to be paid, yeah. you know. Nice. And it wasn't me. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> genius. Did he pay you cash? No, he'd pay a check after it cleared, you know, after everything cleared. So they could rip me off, but then I'd never book them again. Yeah, that's no point. Yeah. Um, So that worked well. Cobweb. Yeah, but yes, you find a studio that's kind of quiet. Yeah. He he has his own place and works a lot for his movie stuff out of like Electric Lady or Avatar or whatever. But I'm kind of that freelancey guy more Mm -hmm. that I I do spend a lot of time in certain places, Mm -hmm. you know? Like the new place I've been working at, Kaleidoscope in Union City, which is right across the river. I'm there a lot. Mm -hmm. And they love it, you know, because I'm a good client. I don't destroy the place. You know, they get paid. Mm -hmm. Well, a studio working is better than a studio not working. Not working, yeah. But, you know, it's, and it's also, but, you know, it's, you have a studio. If you show up on a Saturday morning in the Friday night session, left beer and pizza everywhere and the place is trash, that sucks. Yeah. You know, so that's not helpful either. Right. But um, anyway, but I, I, I think that's a genius idea. Yeah, so that, that worked for me because, because the bands that I was budding up with as, as producer and sort of like fifth member and let's, let's move this forward together, that was all cool. But when it came to psychologically handing me hundreds of pounds yeah that it didn't go that far they're like go, right. yeah. uh we give you money and, and yeah. so and yeah. so uh, they couldn't put <laughs> like, that together wait, you want to get paid for that <laughs> yeah they couldn't put that together so if i just blamed it on the studio right. yeah it's perfect you were just an altruist who was <laughs> oh yeah sharing your oh, love of so music good. all of that <laughs> um and then so i think eventually you also opened your own place yeah so i I sort of bought into the and and helped evangelize the sort of producer clubhouse right. type studio because I wanted all the money in my pocket. Right. And the demographic changed as well. So it used to be there were bands uh, that had managers and the managers would have five acts, maybe two signed that would finance things mm-hmm. and they could bankroll three other bands or mm-hmm. two other bands to mm-hmm. do demos and run around. That stopped. The managers started to just work on the, the signed acts. Mm-hmm. And the demo budgets, the, the the all the A&R guys were all you know back at home with their their mothers, um, with no fax machine and no phone and no car, because um, of the recession and stuff. Right. So the demo boom had gone. What year is that? Uh, uh, that would have been ballpark. that would have been uh, late eighties. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's a recession in England, and so then it was bands paying for it themselves. Uh, so I had to have a different skill set instead of, you know, producing for A and R demos and managers. My clients were really the band now, right. so that was a different sort of thing. You know, I'd have right. to pick them up and shake them out till every coin fell out. 
you know. Uh, you have, was your, is your place a multi-room place also? or is No, it, it was just a, a small place with a Pro Tools rig, but it had a live room. Right, right. So, right. and then I drove myself mad with Pro Tools trying to get it to sound like tape. and Yeah. And, uh, Early uh, on, that was yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, that's right, the Mix Plus yeah, yeah, that's right. Sister, you know, all the pretty looking EQs yeah. that say focus right. But, like, uh, don't, you know, no. the early EQs didn't sound like a focus right, you know. So, so you, you transitioned to digital pretty early? Yeah. I, know, I found it a bit difficult staring at the screen and, and all that, the, all the librarianship yeah, of, right. of, uh, of digital. But I couldn't, I couldn't hack. Uh, the, 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 my clients couldn't stand um, the cost of tape. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was just like a oh, day's yeah. studio time yeah. to them. Right. Um, it really was a thing, you know. It just, tape became a real problem. Well, you know, you'd, this you'd be sat with a band and you'd go, well, that second take was good, but I think you got, may, might have another one but we're going to have to get another reel. Yeah. And then you'd have an hour long discussion about the purchase of the yeah. of the extra reel. Right. That was the brilliance of Les Paul and Bing Crosby mm -hmm. was they bought Ampex. As yeah. soon as they realized that it started to sound good, yeah. They just bought the company. Wow. Yeah. And Les Paul was, you know, he ran five tape machines at the same time and you know, he's got Steve Rosenthal can tell us about how many yeah. vaults of tape he had, but he just bought the company. Yeah. And it started overcharging us for tape. That <laughs> exactly. asshole. It smells good, though, doesn't it? It, it does. sure does. The smell of tape in the it morning? Sure, yeah, it, it really sure does. No, yeah. it does. Yeah. It really actually, actually does. Actually bottle it. Yeah. 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 That's a good little perfume. Does Do you ever use the current ATR tape type tapes, or are you strictly in Pro Tools? Uh, now now I'm strictly running this, the website, strictly running Gear Sluts. So I'm, I'm oh, a, gotcha, gotcha. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm a retired producer oh, and yeah. active. How does that feel? I'm enjoying that, too. Right. Yeah. D do you miss being in the room? It's like riding a bike. I know I can do it straight away. Yeah. And my kid, um, one of my kids was in a choir, and I hooked up a studio for his choir, and I was in there producing and running back and forth between the control room right. and the live yeah. area, really enjoying it. And um, so, yeah. But your site is like the most popular site in the world for mm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's got. So you, that must traffic. be a full time job. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but let's. Yeah. So how did it come about? So I, um, I was in the trenches, studio engineer, producer, doing my thing with the Cobweb Studios and all that sort of thing. And then there were a series of sad events in my family that meant that like three different people died and, mm -hmm. th and there was some money coming through. Not, not a fortune, not millions or anything like that, but enough for me to get my hot little hands on some equipment. And stuff so i spent a lot of time thinking about what to buy with this careful investment and stuff and i just fell headlong into um into i'd used all the stuff because on sessions you'd hire what you needed you know so mm. I, I, had, I had a good idea of how it all worked and what it sounded like and so i just picked out i was specking my studio and on that journey i i think i stumbled upon a news group rec.audio.pro mm. an early days wow. message board right. like compu service that's like right that. yeah, yeah. Wow. and uh, it was very ugly looking and and but uh, right. and i really enjoyed the camaraderie online of people bitching about their day crazy singer you know strung out on heroin is driving me mad you know couldn't get anything done today and right. and someone else saying oh so you read that thing by me yeah <laughs> it was about you it, was, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't by you i wrote it yeah <laughs> asshole guitar player yeah, exactly yeah. tune up Can't <laughs> so it was fun it was fun all this sort of sharing you know and at the end of a day you know you get online and you might you know type a bunch of stuff and so it's like a citizen journalism yeah. you know right. So I really enjoyed that and got involved in that and picking up, you know, I'd save articles about, you know, recording to Pro Tools in a folder. I never read it again, you know, and because I memorized it, you right. know, because I just, but I, I think I'd use it later. Right. But, so I was soaking up info from them and uh, became a sort of hobby, you know. Did you have like compadres, like guys on your level who you recognize were also posting, like people you knew who were making records at the time? Or? Yeah, definitely. There was lots of people on there that were actively recording and, and so forth. And then um, then someone left as a moderator from one of the other forums, from a, an early days forum, and said, I'm going, perhaps you'd like the job. So I became a custodian of a little area mm. on a forum, mm. rec uh, record, recording.org, I think it was. And what I did was, when it's the minute I started, I, I sent out a, a whistle, like, 
over here, right? And bam, the poof, traffic really blew up. Wow. And got really big. And then... Um, Were they competitors? Uh, sites or forums? Uh, one was, well, the first one was a news group. So right. that was like, no one was making any money from it at all. Right. It was just a sort of community thing up there. And this thing was a, a sort of semi commercial entity, you know. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And then I was, I was a volunteer there. Then the guy that ran it wanted to charge everyone 50 bucks or 25 bucks a year, which is a terrible idea with the internet because everyone right. wants everything for free. Yeah. You know? yeah. And overnight, he, put that charge in overnight it completely killed mm -hmm. the the traffic stopped and makes sense. and it fucked my hobby because i yeah. was like yeah. i was enjoying this right. and then someone said like for a hundred bucks you could get get forum software you know and i thought well, you might as well run your to own. make your own yeah so i got a friend to install it and then i went again and it's over here right and poof it was like an instant sort of instant start to a community and i'd handpicked a bunch of good comrades you know to from um from my travels around the web you know they're all crazy talking about gear and right. and weren't grumpy right. you know they're right. sort of positive right. positive right. nature and so forth so that's how gear i mean it's started. just so it's just evolved into like this monster site it's just so crazy yeah yeah, it's so traffic just uh, sort of snowballed. And so what's happened now is because everyone's talking about gear is that if you're doing some research on like, I don't know, an Orban EQ or something or a, a Fairchild compressor, it's got a huge Google footprint uh, because of all the different discussions. It'll come high up in Google. Uh, people will see, oh, shit, there's like 12 discussions about it. I'll go there and check it out. And and so that snowballs and that causes more traffic and and so we were talking to our engineers yeah. in there James and Sean yeah. Owen they do a lot of research online mm -hmm. probably more than we do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also they work at our studios and you know when a technical thing comes up they have to kind of figure out how to fix it yeah and so when they go on they're immediately directed to your site mm. that's the first place mm -hmm. that they're directed to yeah. Is that just because there's so much volume there that That's you become right. at the top of the That's list? That's right. Yeah. So I had a guy that d d runs Pro Tools rigs for really big acts uh, for for their live shows because they have a Pro Tools rig running, and something wasn't working, and this card wasn't this Pro Tools card wasn't working, and then he he found a, a post on Gear Sluts that said that as you put the card in and out, a tiny capacitor can get knocked and fall off. And he read that on gear slots, and then he pulled the card out and he said, fuck, it's not there. Yeah. You know, and he had one in his bag because he's a, you know, geek. He fixed it and then, you know, the show was saved, you know, because of someone talking on gear slots about right. it. Right. Well, what if the opposite happens? What if someone gives false information or? Well, then then they might get machine gunned by the crowd, you know. Right. The, the, right. the, the, the right. So there must, must be a tough crowd for stuff like that. It right? is. It is. Yeah. Do you follow every day? No, I used to. Uh-huh. I used to. I used to have sort of super dark circles in my mind, like, right. like a vampire. And probably some of it is like out of your purview of interest. Some of it's out of your. I mean, there's so much information there. Yeah, I started off as a rock and guitar thing, and it's mutated into the primary music genre is uh, EDM and electronic mm -hmm. music, and synths. Very technically based. Yeah, and all the synth stuff, and yeah. which, which isn't particularly my interest. Right. But that's cool. I like I like the, the conversations flowing and stuff. So. Do people ever get into scrapes? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah. and then Like about taste or about like uh, opinions of what's yeah, better? Well, it, it, yeah, it's a lot of guys, and, uh, and sometimes they just won't like each other's style, you know. If they get really bad, I have to take them out to the vir you? virtual car park in Jersey and... <laughs> they never come back Over in the weeds or <laughs> yeah that's right yeah um so you do have to sort of keep your eye on the yeah. vibe of what's going on yeah and so the, in the early days i was cracking a lot of heads together mm -hmm. like will you two get on and stop it or you're banned for like a week until you can stop telling this other person to fuck right. off because we don't allow that here right. so but do you have now that you're not there every day yeah. do you have someone who has to kind of keep an eye on everything yeah they, well there's lots of moderators they each keep an eye on their own section but i have a community manager scott and he's um his nickname on on the site is white cat that's his uh that's his, that's his handle and he's um he's the sort of head right. decision maker on 
And is it, are you allowed to kind of determine who's on the side or not? Is that like... Yeah, it's a private... It is private, private so you can. So, so, yeah. You can determine... Yeah, someone can't say, I have this note from the police force that I'm allowed to be on here and tell this person to fuck off as much as I want. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That doesn't happen, you know. So funny. So, a lot of it's, yeah, sort of... So, James, one of our engineers... Yes. ...was asking about... Uh, has net neutrality laws being repealed affected you or gear sluts? Does it concern you? Yeah, uh, all that stuff's a concern. What exactly net neutrality is, I don't know. No, <laughs> right. no but um, I'm keeping an eye on all that. Uh, it would be a drag if uh, speeds of sites were throttled just because Netflix paid a lot of money and, the, and that your site would operate poorly, but right. Facebook would work great. And, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that would right. be a drag. So... And then, and then it's it's the typical opposite of what they say it is, right? It's they call it net neutrality, but it's really not. Um, but this is that, that's what I'm I mean. being a bit of a dummy on that subject. But, but that's what I mean but, about John and I kind of are less apt to go there, even though I go there unintentionally. I'm I'm taken there, yeah, right. Because if if those guys aren't around, yeah. and I'm sitting there with something blowing up, yeah, I want to just get an answer right away. Yeah. And I'm directed right to your site. Yeah. And there's, an, right. an, like, it's just a wealth of information that is, did you think it was going to no. become this universal? No, I thought it was just going to be so like a engineer hang, you know. Right. Um, Which also would have been great. I mean, that's a yeah. cool community thing Yeah. to be part of. Do people talk about records, like, just for fun, you know, what records are going around? Oh, what yeah. They like? Yeah, they do that. We have threads on that. We also get uh, guest Q&As. Mm-hmm. So the, the cool thing about that is that it probably used to be in, in, if you live in New York, you could probably find a friend of a friend, if you tried really hard, mm-hmm. that maybe once worked on a Bowie record and you could right. perhaps buy him a beer, get a story right. or something. But if you're from a small village in Norway, mm-hmm. right, you ain't never going right. to meet anyone that worked right. on a Bowie record, right? In your town, you know. Right. But if, if the producer turns up on Gear Sluts and is answering questions, yeah, that's cool. Um, you could ask yeah. like Tony Visconti and and uh, Mike Shipley and uh, Bruce Sweetian and stuff. They've all been special guests, you know. Right. And, and, and is it, it's a one-time hit, like they say, okay, yeah. I'm here now, Yeah, let's yeah. talk now. It's That's not right. like you can keep... No, right. they're there for about uh, two weeks right. or a month. Right. And Bruce Sweetian did uh, two months. Wow. That's he, actually nice. That's a commitment. Yeah, he was, he was bored out of his mind. His studio's being built, and uh, <laughs> he wanted to keep yeah. going. He loved it. And also, we protect them. You can't say, "Oh, you know, I thought your last record was shit," because right. uh, right. we'd, we'd block that right. for the right. for these it. guests, you know. Right, because that's also that's just that bag thing, and I see that on the social media. Mm. It's like certain people get on these sites just to like cause shit and yeah. just be negative. And you know what? Like, you wouldn't do that to his face if you saw him at AES. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. don't fucking do it online. It's bullshit. I, I get a little annoyed about that because I know a couple of what I call flamethrowers mm-hmm. and they're not fun to be around and it doesn't help. It doesn't forward any conversation. How do you keep politics out of it? Uh, I used to have a politics section, but basically uh, I found that y- you have liberals and you have sort of right-wingers or the hawks, you know, and liberals, which I, th- I think everyone in, that does music is a liberal, but that's completely wrong. Right. I, I got that wrong. I thought yeah. it was peace, love, and harmony, you know, but, but not exactly, you know. So uh, the right-wingers uh, had more stamina to spew, the extreme right-wingers had more stamina to spew their stuff rather than the liberals spewing their opinion, and they just gave up, like, right. you know, just like, you know. That's very... That's almost a microcosm for. Well, like, that I mean, is a microcosm of the for country. reality. Uh, yeah. yeah, reality. Yeah. So, so uh, just uh, and I realized I couldn't I couldn't stand by a section of the forum that had right wingers saying, "Oh, here's another jihadi beheading video," you right. know, and, right. and, and like that's not that's not what I created the right. site yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, but you did have a specific section that kept them away from. I did. Right. I did, and it wasn't visible to the public. It was only only if you remember. But in the end, it just got to be a cesspit, and you know, I just I just killed it off right. just to keep the right. harmony up. You know, I mean, it seems like it's in a place where it's like beautifully welcoming of anyone in our community mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Are you constantly trying to think of new things? Do you need to update the concept? Yeah, or? so yeah, we've got an idea on, on new things. I think it's a, a little bit lamentable that um, 
but we could have more women mm-hmm. on the forum. And right. I think we have more than we, we think we do because they just don't identify themselves as being female with their avatar, uh-huh. with their picture or their avatar. I'd like to have more uh, conspicuous female contributors, you know. Right. And I'd like the guys, when people do contribute, I'd like the guys on the site to behave yeah. right. better. Yeah. yeah. That'd be right. nice, you know. So Another you, microcosm of reality. Yeah, exactly. It's It's almost like... Just by accident, by the fact that it's become so ubiquitous or universal that all these kind of complex issues, like you said, you just started on a forum and wanted to talk about some interesting things of interest to you. Yeah. And now the world has entered it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, because anybody can, I can just sign in right now, right? Just just sign, put my name in and boom. Well, you don't even have to just to read information. You just type in. Oh, uh, you can just write. You can just go to. Blah, blah, blah. And Gearslots comes up. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. And so the company is monetized by ads. Ads, that's right. Yeah. Right. Ads and affiliate linking off the, so we put eBay links on the side and pictures of, of if someone's talking about a mic we can figure that out and then we'll show the mic right underneath was the business part of it something you had to learn or did you yeah. have someone help you or no i just just picked it up someone right. said you've got so, enough traffic you could probably have some ads so we started off with um giving away some apogee equipment i mm. thought well who's going to complain about that you know? right so they right. didn't so carried on like that do you do any contests or? yeah yeah we do contests and giveaways and we have a deal zone that's worth checking out. So uh, manufacturers send us their their latest deals, and so the deal zone is a very popular area on the forum. Right. Oh, what about buying sense. used gear? Uh, yeah, we have a classified section, and we have our own classifieds. But you can take your eBay link or Reverb link, paste it in, and it'll automatically create a posting for you of your pictures and everything, and kind of like to boost your own. Mm thing on ebay oh, that's amazing yeah and that's free yeah. but could you usurp the ebay whole thing and just take uh, over like uh, here's where you buy used gear yeah but the thing is then we'd have to have a whole office floor of people trying to catch people doing frauds oh i see and like oh, you know i right. just sent six thousand yeah. dollars for this mic it never turned oh, yeah. up so it's you're your right. fault right i did it on your platform so everything's at the user's risk and so we direct people to reverb and yeah and to ebay and right and and we have our own section, and that's popular too. So, But it's really worthwhile. If you're selling something, put it on Reverb or eBay or our platform, but put an eBay link or a Reverb link right? and yeah. just do that for free. Have you ever thought of, I'm sure you've thought all, yeah. of all of it, opening a repair part of it? Because so many people go online, yeah, f- go to your site because mm. of, they're there partially because of just right. interest in all this stuff, but... People are like, what the mm. fuck? Yeah, mm. that's true. I got to fix this bike. It's an interesting idea. You could have a, a global network of... Um, Techs. Gear slot sort yeah. of uh, field hospitals. Field yeah. hospitals. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I've, I've got it. I've got an 8-track <laughs> that needs fixing. Yeah, he does. Like a actually. cartridge 8-track right. from like 1978. So if we could find a guy. If I could find a guy in gear slots that'll do it, that would be fantastic. You could. You could. By post. You'd have to post and then you'd right. see, see right. what people would people would say. But you have all these technicians all over. Yeah, Tim, yeah Tim, blah, blah, blah. Who would be working for in conjunction with Julian? Yeah. Blah yeah. blah blah guy in Weehawken needs uh Or even blah, blah. remember you asked me the other day about a piano tuner. Yeah, right, exactly. Like people need to, you know, it's hard to find service guys now of all kinds. You yeah. know, they're just not everywhere. Well they we do. have an area on the forum called Geek Sluts. Uh huh. And that's all about transistors, diodes and Ivana Manley's the uh, moderator. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. we've, had we've had her on, she's great. Yeah. yeah. She packs a mighty punch, that lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so AES is a big responsibility for you. You have to kind of yeah, we like make to have a presence. A pre- yeah, we have a presence there and uh, one of the teams going around videoing new products because uh-huh. we like to bring new products to the, to the audience, you know. Do you do NAM and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, we do that. So you go to all the... All I don't personally, but, um, but one of our team does. Right. Yeah. So all the in- there are international shows. There's one in Germany, I believe. Yeah, uh, Music Messe. Right. I go to that sometimes. Right. In Frankfurt. And um, do you see all the same people, or there? Uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, someone that is completely busy in uh, the AES or NAM will uh, an American w- w- will be sat on a stool, twiddling his thumbs, sort of 
completely with no one, no one around, and so they're happy to see you, you know, right. like you know, because they're they're not surrounded by right. they're out of their right. depth, you know, right. they're in they're in Europe and stuff. So, and are there? I don't know if John might have asked this before. Are there mm-hmm. any? Do you have any competition at this point? Yeah, there's a couple of other publications who I wouldn't want to I wouldn't right. want to boost by yeah. mentioning them. <laughs> yeah. but, but you do uh, have to. People are thinking they can do similar things. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and they also like they'll come and do raids and try and promote their thing on your. Oh uh, yeah, and then we shut them down. Right. That's terrible. Wow. The things you. Have, well, that's how I got started doing raids on other. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. They're not doing it here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's your site though, right? Like, like you yeah. said, it's a private site, so you can. Yeah, one thing we have people with. Um, we got someone got, got quite twisted about uh, a blogger got quite twisted about being shut down. He would he, he'd say, "Oh yeah, I've got some tips on how to record this." You. You do this, da da da, and you type a little bit, and you say, "Well, if you want to see the rest, come to my blog at oh, right, www. Right, dot, you know, whatever." It's like, no, just right. you know, yeah. either type it or you know, or don't, don't, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, no, that's true. So he got very jaded. And wrote right. Up. So you really do have to monitor everything somewhat. Mm. He said the whole New Jersey parking lot thing. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't joking when he said that. Yeah. Right. Probably none of this would have remotely come to mind when you first started this. no it was just a hobby just a just a chit chat how great stuff. yeah how great that it came from yeah just I'm really i feel really lucky you know and and i get to hang out with with you guys because you're still working right mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh yeah and get to go to studios like the one we're sat yeah. in here yeah. yep yeah and uh you're my people and yeah um, well i'm gonna start going on the, on the site i just i never do that shit and there well, was I'm saying we're we're a little late. No, to I the know, but I'm going to make myself do it because there was also I had this thing with um, my buddy. Do you know William Whitman? Bill Whitman, engineer producer. Him, well, anyway, he uh, had this thing. He's got a presence on Gear Sluts. Is he on Gear Sluts? Yeah. Does oh, he yeah. have a forum? I don't know, not a forum, but a few times that I oh, looked yes, into yes, yes. certain things. Well, there's a different site that mm-hmm. years ago, some Terry Manning asked me and Bill to co. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I never posted anything. It's been like six years. I just don't do that shit. You know what I mean? I'm not like a blog. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not. I, I, that yeah. just doesn't come natural. But I, after hearing this conversation, I, I, I want to go on the site and I'll join up and all that shit because I, I think it'd be fun to at least check out who's there. But yeah, if, a lot of people yeah. read it. Bob Clearmont reads it and right. stuff. Yeah. You know. But but if someone like John or I would uh, like, I wind up there because whenever I'm in trouble. Yeah, but I you're watched. sitting at your studio in trouble. Yeah, but right? even it's like a, even like the other when I'm in trouble, I yell at the What's assistant. That? It's like a John Taylor song. I went right. up there with him. Right. <laughs> Guess that will right. always be there. <laughs> but if like for for instance, if we wanted to, like he wants to sign up and check it out, would he see a scroll of places to go, or does he have to put in an issue that he's like a table of contents? In? Yeah, we've got a sub forum which sort of tries to indicate what things are about. It's difficult. There's conversations everywhere. There's a sort of uh, there's a hip hop area. There's um, electronic music area. Some people are just slaves to that. They'll just right. go straight there. Right. They're not interested in anything else. Right. And then there's a computer music forum for if you've got issues with your computer mm-hmm. and what to get. But say John's a very analog analog. So the high end or so much gear, so little time. Right. That, those, those yeah, I'm looking are. at it right now. I got the page up. It's fantastic. Yep. It's easy to get around. And it's the it's the forum tab that you want to click right. on there. Yeah, that, yeah, that's no, it. It's very easy to go. And to that gives you the marketplace and review. I mean, that's it's fantastic. But before to go deeper, do you, does he have to sign up? Yeah, I'm going to sign up. But yeah, but you have to. Yeah, you just enter your. Oh email no, no, you can just yeah, you can you view the site like you do. Yeah, you visit it and jog around and look at it and right. browse around. That's that's free. Yeah, but I want to sign up. And yeah, if you want to post, you just. Uh, it's easy. You just just do a quick registration and you're, right. yeah, you're in. Yeah. So every every three weeks I can go. Hey Julian, how you doing? John, remember me from the podcast? Yeah. Block. Miss you. <laughs> He'll block you right away. Right, yeah. Spammer. <laughs> Sp- <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of the show. I really like it. Oh, good. It's really Thank funny. You. Oh, super. Yeah. It's really funny. I like the intro as well. That's that's. Yeah. Uh, that's is, is that your wife? It's funny my that? wife, and then my, and daughter, my daughter does the intro. My yeah, daughter, daughter, daughter. Back then, right. she that's, was ten years old. Yeah. That's but, um, no, we, we we we're having really fun. It's really great. And you know, honestly, uh, three years ago, maybe more, four years ago, my brother Thank Tony said to us, just do a podcast together. And we were like, no, it's just that's stupid. He's busy, I'm busy. And my brother was like, just do it. And we're like, no. And he said, just go in for an hour and talk. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be great and you'll see. And then we just went in and we, we originally started by doing like what we call current events. Mm-hmm. Like he's working on this, I'm working on this, whatever. And um, right, I mean, he, we, we cut it together. 
it was actually fun. It's very similar, you know, without the monetization of it. Right. It's very similar to, we just went in and did it for... Shits and giggles. Because this is what we talk about anyway. And yeah. yeah. We joked that we would sit in the corner bistro in 1995 with like, and Chris Shaw, the engineer, would come in mm -hmm. and he, we would all just complain about our days. You know, and that's what... Complain club. <laughs> we, <laughs> we could have that part crime, of it crime too. club. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything that we've missed that you'd like us to kind of... Just any the, way to... The deal zone is worth checking in on. Yeah. The second hand, boost your sales, you know, by just... You know, if it's on eBay or Reverb, you might as well Yeah. Uh, put that link on right. Gear Sluts and have everyone see it. Right. Check our Q&A archives out. Mm -hmm. all the famous people we've had on, mm -hmm. all, the, all the super top platinum producers or whatever, they're, they're all in the Q&A section. And so people may have asked questions that you might have wanted to ask them and, right. and read that. Is there any complexities? I'm just wrapping my head yeah, around how sure. deep this is. Yeah. Are there any complexities that we've missed that you've run across that were totally unexpected to you or th just a, like in your um, day? Yeah, what would happen is that, say, a guy would buy a piece of equipment on a Friday, but Friday night he's going out, so he wouldn't. Get so Saturday's a bit hungover. So Sunday he gets around to open it up, and he opens it up, and it doesn't, it's not working, right? So he emails tech support, but it's a Sunday, right? right? So, and by, by 2 a.m. on Sunday, the tech support for whatever company it is, they're, they're like a war criminal. <laughs> because they haven't responded right. to his right. 2 a.m. Right. 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 problem with right. the gear. Right? <laughs> so, then, so then he hops on gear sluts right. and starts to say the, the most awful support. Yeah. This is the, this end of the world. And by the way, does anyone, can anyone help me? Yeah, yeah. And so in extreme cases like this, I'll get this phone call where it's two people on the line. It's the marketing director of the company mm -hmm. and the owner of the company. And the owner of the company wants that stuff deleted. Right. Right. And the marketing guy, going, it doesn't work like that. Right. You can't do that. Right. It's a community. You know, if you delete that, they'll all get pissed off and they'll right. post more. That's all true. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. 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 so it's like whack a mole. If yeah. you try and bury some stuff, right. they'll all go, it's corporate slime. And then becomes even pulling the yeah. strings of gear sluts right. and they're in charge and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, you don't so, want that. No. So, and then meanwhile, eight people have come to the the defense of the company mm -hmm. and said, you know, I've got it. It works or try this. Yeah, they're not so yeah. bad and stuff like that. So I have to calm the, calm the owner down, like right. chillax, you know, it, it'll, it'll all be all right. right. And, right. And, and tighten up your support a bit, maybe, you know, but I mean, you can't expect to support that be there like Sunday night at two in the morning. That that's, you know, people don't work. No, but does it, do any company send their support to gear? Yeah, they do. And be yeah. aware. Hey, if yeah. someone's yeah. blah, 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 get yeah. on it right away. And sometimes we'll send, uh, if we see something, We'll we'll send the company uh, an email saying, "Hey, look, you know, better get on this." You know? Right? Yeah. There you go. Because if you see something, say something. Say something. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bomb scare. Uh, yeah, I know it is. <laughs> Terrorist <laughs> bomb scare. It is. Yeah, I know. And I know the site is just so popular with the kids. So yeah. and you created it from the ground up, and so it's a fascinating story. So yeah. I'm really glad when you made yourself, you were available. Oh yeah, for, sure. for today. I like the kids liking it, you know. Yeah, good. yeah. Kids are got, kids are all right. <laughs> yeah, well, we're um, not that all right. But yeah. also, <laughs> sorry. Can you see ten years from now? Can you see down the road? Is that do you are you not yeah, interested it's, it's in just, thinking it, that well, way? Well, it's worried. You, you, you sort of worry about the written word, you know, because people don't don't write so much but yeah. but to see video footage of someone going ah i got this compressor it's not mm. working and it's just you know hasn't even put a shirt on you know it's like <laughs> it's not really attractive yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. so i think i just sort of hope the written word continues on as yeah. a communication Way of communicating media, you know? right yeah there's foreign languages versions of the site oh, we've, no got kidding. A, we've got a spanish section and um that's you know bubbling under i thought it would be huge i thought we we're going to be Oh, South America is mm -hmm. going to be right. on Gislets, but no. They're reading it in English. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. Well, you picked a good language to start with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, because you know, whenever I tra travel to Europe for work, I yeah. always latch on to the person who speaks English, yeah. and I never have to learn another language, which yeah. is kind of douchey for me, but that's just worked for me. Yeah. So, you, you know yeah. what I mean. I, Germans I'm, like Gislets a lot. Mm -hmm. It's very popular there. Do you need to advertise? Not really. Amazing. That's kind of great. Yeah. yeah. 
not really. I sort of thought about it, and they did some calculations that you know that what you make the, to do the ads, and someone said, "Nope, it's not going to work right. out." You know, right. So I looked at it, but but then you would advertise where like on like eBay or Tape Op or shit like that, right? Or Is that where you were looking even at? Even Mix Magazine, Mix Magazine. Yeah. But that's what you. Would uh, do. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't want that. You know, they wouldn't want to run the ad. You know, because it's like competing. Oh, competing with because right. it's a publication, right? Oh, I see. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. But so then, where would we're you, friends with Tape Op and mm -hmm. Where would you run ads then if you were to do it? Like, did you, what, did you try to calculate that? When you I know, Facebook or something, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Right. Yeah. But we looked into it. The numbers just don't work. Right. right. The value of each reader is like the breath of an <laughs> ant on a penny, you know, so. That sounds like Spotify. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that, yeah. So it doesn't, it's not uh, economic to. But it's almost the beautiful part of it is that you don't have to do that. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's built into. What do they call it? Organic. Yeah, yeah grew, that's great. Yeah. Grew organically, yeah. So I like that. And I love your uh, podcast. So I'm going to wrap it up. And thank okay. you for having me. Well, yeah, man, yeah, thank you. No, I think awesome. We, I think really we great. Good. I'm a big fan. I listen to them all. You do? Uh, really? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, you can listen to yours. Yeah, You're going to have to. I'm going to have <laughs> to. Gonna yeah. Have to. <laughs> really great. Thank you, Julian. Really <laughs> thank great. You. A pleasure Fantastic. meeting you. Yeah. Bravo. You made me feel at home. <laughs> me and Stewie want to thank all you gear clubbers for listening to this crazy podcast we do. If you can, leave a review on iTunes. It really makes a difference. And don't be shy. We love hearing from you guys on the social media at Gear Club Podcast. Don't forget to go to gearclubpodcast.com for Spotify playlists, links and photos for the episodes, and my favorite hot sauce of the month.